welcome to another episode of the Haskin Cast Podcast. I am your host, Scott Haskin, with a good friend of mine, our returning champion with his new single, Freedom, Dean Ray. Let's welcome him to the show. Dean, how are you? Hey, oh, I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great, man. It, it's great to have you back. Uh, it's I'm I'm really excited that your single's dropping uh, as of the day that this will release. Of course, we're not live, so we're recording a little bit before Christmas. How does it feel to be getting another song out to the world? It's a relief, you know. To to release something is always it's a nice release. It's like you you you've documented this uh, this moment, and it could be years later, and you're finally letting it letting it go in a way you're sort of letting it out uh so it's really nice i'm looking forward to it coming out because i've recorded this particular song like this is probably the third time i've recorded it okay you know and it just wasn't right maybe it was the first one wasn't right the second one was amazing but it didn't get released at the time and then by the time i got around to this one it was a bit high for me and i felt that i sang it better a couple like a key down so it's um yeah just tracked it again <laughs> yeah. it kind of gets a bit ridiculous which it, it happens where you record something you're like oh, it just doesn't feel right and you try it again with a different producer and you know it kind of so this one's oh i wrote this in like 2015 or 16 mm -hmm. so it's finally coming out i'm very very happy about that well, I'm, I'm glad you stuck with it. Uh, how different is this version from the second version that you did? Well, it's uh, it, to me, it feels a little bit more organic. I think um, the last version I recorded of it was a bit too polished. Oh, you know, it was a little bit too crisp and polished. It was awesome, and I loved it. Uh, and I would have liked to have kept it, but by the time I got to thinking about releasing Freedom. I changed so much vocally that it needed to be recorded again, you know. Well, um, and, and sometimes it's it's so easy to overproduce something where the production itself sounds good, but it doesn't represent you as who you are as an artist anymore. Like you lose your character yeah. in the production. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had a fair few instances where that's happened. Um, there's plenty of songs that I haven't really been able to use because of that you know but they're songs that i'd love to revisit and and have a go at producing them myself the way i can hear them and uh and see if if they're usable that way and if they're not then i'll send them out to other artists and see if anyone would like to utilize them you know and that's that's one of the beautiful things i love about music is you you can write a song and go i think the song has merit but i don't think it fits me but there are so many other artists out there that there are other people uh, that it could fit easily. I think it was, um, I want to say it was, uh, it was Is This Love or Still of the Night that uh, David Coverdale actually wrote for Tina Turner and then decided right. it was too good and he kept it for himself. <laughs> and obviously <laughs> it worked out well, but I mean, how different would that song be under her style and her voice yes. taking that song and developing it? So I, I love that that flexibility i guess in music i think um i think um is it jones glenn jones country artist mm -hmm. um yeah he's uh he released an album quite maybe 10 15 years ago that was called um hits i missed and some that i had mm -hmm. and it was you know like eight songs that had been offered to him and he said no, that other artists had big hits from. Ooh. And then two two or four songs that were songs that he actually had hits with. And it was, yeah, it was a wonderful to hear his take on these songs that he'd missed out on uh, just from, I guess it doesn't feel right at the time. And that that is such an, a great concept. I love the idea of that. And I love hearing stories about Thing, like those decisions that people make because they could be so life-changing. One yes or one no could completely change the course of your life. Of course, you wouldn't know because you have to go with your gut or what makes the most sense. But thinking about uh, like uh, Al Pacino turning down the role of Han Solo in Star Wars or 
uh, you know, Harrison Ford turning down the role of uh, Tony Montoya in Scarface. Like I hear about these things. I'm like, how different would the world be if mm. just one of those decisions changed? But I love that he revisited them. That's a cool idea. Mm. Yeah. And I think like going with your gut. So the song Freedom uh, that's coming out today. Um, it's It's about getting yourself in a situation where you didn't, to make the decision with your gut or with your heart necessarily you made the decision on will this be okay would this be good it's logical it's too logical you know uh and that's i've wound up in a, a couple of situations relationships where i i didn't necessarily want to be um and it's just young and foolish and you end up feeling trapped and you end up for me personally, I've lashed out with my behavior as far as uh, partying too much and treating them with less respect than they've deserved and and just being a, a piece of shit sometimes, to be honest. Like, I've looked back at things that I've done in relationships long ago and thought, man, you know, that's something that I've had to accept as you wake up to things, uh, to humility and to truth and to being centered in yourself and freedom was sort of documenting one of those times, you know, about a breakup where I, I wasn't going with my heart and I felt like I was trapped in this, this thing, this, this machine that was moving in the wrong direction and I had to get out of it. You know, but before you get out of it, there's all this stuff that goes with it, you know? So people that, People that break up, that do the dumping in a relationship have usually been mourning the relationship for a while. Right. And they've they've wanted out for a while. It's not a spontaneous thing. Therefore, whoever gets dumped or broken up with feels shocked by it. Or a lot of the time it's kind of comes out of nowhere. You're like, what? What are you talking about? And that sort of shock is uh yeah, it's it stops your life for a minute. It really really hits home whereas uh the person who's got to leave is kind of finally has been not looking forward to having that conversation for so long and then finally having that conversation gives them a bit of relief and then you know there's more hurt that comes after that sure but um freedom was about kind of that conversation in a way so I, I kind I, of um, wondered that because the, the person that does the breaking up, by the time that they get around to doing it, by the time that they've dealt with whatever, they're kind of over the relationship. But now they're telling the other person. So they're like here. And then the other person is just finding out. So now they're just scratching the surface of that pain. And it's that I'll yeah. do anything to get you back. I, I'll, I'll change. I'll do this. The begging comes in. And they don't really understand that the other person has been over that for a long time. And, yeah. and it really yeah. just, they're not on the same page at all. Um, but I wondered if it was something like that, because it seemed like almost like you're self-sabotaging so that the person will leave you because you're being the bad guy to prevent yourself from being the bad guy. It's strange, isn't it? Isn't it a weird headspace to to operate in? It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, um, it's exactly what it is. You're, you're trying to, Get, be cold and uh, and blunt so that they might get sick of you and leave so you don't have to you know confront the situation and, and be the person who hurts them and it doesn't make sense it's like why would you, i don't get it these days you know i understand that it happens because i've been in that situation i've been on the receiving end too probably more times than sure. i've been on the delivery end uh, but but, it, but it's, it's interesting it's because horrible. you're you're hurting them in one way to not hurt them in another way. It's really kind of oxymoronic yeah. in, 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 in of itself, you know. It makes no sense, but it makes sense because the world's weird and life's weird. <laughs> Things just don't make sense sometimes. And looking at it logically, it makes no sense whatsoever. You may as well just sit down with them and say, "Look, I'm really sorry to have to have this chat with you, but I'm not feeling I'm not feeling it anymore." Or I feel trapped in this blah blah but instead we i've been one to internalize it and not speak to the partner about it and just make a complete mess and and then bugger off out of there and it's it's a t terrible thing to do 
and it's been years since I've done anything like that. Right. I prefer the discussion, you know, but that's where freedom sort of happened for me. It just started flowing out. I'd written a verse. Um, and then there's this, uh, this uh, singer songwriter coming over and she's quite well known in Australia and, and Europe. And she came over and I was looking forward to working with her because she's quite eclectic, you know, her music was very indie and had a cool sound. And I was like, this would be cool, you know? And, um, first verse just came out before she got there. And then when she arrived, I said, I've got this thing I was just playing around with. And then, yeah, we just dove into it, you know, and, she added so much to the song that I would not have put in and that I've learned from as well, you know, from her, in my eyes at the time, rule breaking, you know, it's like, Oh, that's different. That's out of the square. Oh, I like that, you know? Um, and the, the bridge section in freedom where it, it builds, um, I'd never put chords in that progression before. Hmm. And until then I'd never considered it. You know, she just started doing it on the piano. And I went, oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> that's really great. And that's just a classic example of two different backgrounds in music plus two different work ethics. And she's a little bit older than me, so she'd been around doing it longer. And she was quite, I believe she was quite classically trained at certain elements in her past, but I never really discussed it too much with her. Um, and then the song's changed a little bit since, you know, like the second verse. Um, I adapted, like, just edited that a bit and rewrote some of it. Um, the bridge has remained the same, and I added a little bit towards the end, you know, and it's it feels feels good now. It, it always felt quite cool, but it never, to me, was like, ah, oh, yes, it's it's completely done. I was thinking maybe the production will finish it. I was like, no. <laughs> no there was structural issues I wanted to suss out before it felt right. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that's not uncommon. And a lot of times, even when you think a song is done, when you go to record it, it changes again. Uh, yeah. But but there's a couple of reasons we collaborate, right? I mean, one is because we just want to do something different. You know, we want to maybe just learn some things from somebody else. Maybe they'll learn something from us. That's one reason to do it. Obviously, tapping into each other's fan bases would be another reason. But sometimes things just gel and you find somebody and, and you just collaborate, you get on the same page really fast. And mm -hmm. those moments are so precious, man. It's so precious. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Now, is so, she the one that sang on the song with you? No. Um, I had a girl from Brisbane in Australia. So the capital of Queensland. And um, I knew, so I met her through her dad um he's a phenomenal keys player i believe he was i think he was born in texas oh to be honest and he does he does go back there uh quite often and spend time there so uh wonderful honky tonk pianist and plays great country music and um when i was about 22 23 um he came to this little gig i was doing and he said can I bring, um, I want to bring my daughter and, and down and, and her and her stepsister. And I was like, yeah, yeah, totally. Come on down, you know, and met them. And at the time, I think they were like 13 and 14 or something like that. And they played me a Harry Styles song or a One Direction song. And they sang in harmony with each other. And it blew me away that these, these kids were just on it. It was unbelievable. And I had a tour coming up in Queensland, so in the state that they lived in. And I said to Vaughn, I was like, would it be like too difficult to get them out of school to go away for a week or two to do these shows and play support? And he's like, we can make that work for sure. And I was like, awesome, if they're interested. And he said, dude, they love music. They'll be interested. It'll be good fun, you know. So we did. We went out and I took these kids on the road and, and it was just wonderful. And then, um, you know, they – off they went and continued doing their thing and went their separate ways a little bit. And uh, Ella went one way and Indy went the other way. And I kept in touch with Ella. And when I started recording this song, I was like, she'd be wonderful for that. She's like 21, 22 now. And um, I sent it up 
and she's in college studying for studying a musical degree. So they got studios available and she just said, yeah, we'll send it up and I'll, I'll track it and send it back down. Nice. And she added harmonies in there that I've never achieved on any of the demos or other recordings, you know, uh, man, it was really cool. And it gelled her voice gelled with mine better than I thought that it would. I knew it'd be awesome, but it gelled much better. And I was like, man, that's just, you could, I couldn't be happier with how that worked out, you know? Well, let me tell you what I do. So when I get uh, anything from your team, shout out to Mel. Uh, Hello. I don't read anything. If there's any kind of music file attached, I just go straight for the music. Like, I don't want any preconceived notions. Don't tell me anything about it. Let me just hear it. And then I'll read up on what what's going on. Right. And that was what, I mean, I, I initially, I, like right off the bat, I like the song. I thought you sounded great on it. I love just the production on it. But then when that other voice came in, I thought, wow, this is different. I, I've not heard him do anything quite like this before, but I thought your voices sounded amazing together. Like you, like you were born to sing together on something. It, it just felt right, doesn't it? It feels really it good. I was yeah. very surprised with it. I just wasn't, you never know how two voices will harmonize, mm -hmm. you know, especially when it's done remotely as well. Yeah. Different kettle of fish. Uh, I will just say that uh, I would not hate it if you ever tried to do something with her again. Uh, I think it'd be <laughs> on the cards. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've been thinking about it. So I've been looking at freedom and releasing freedom. I'm like, well, there's got to be something else I've got that's going to require some epic female vocals on it. But then also there's the opportunity of talking to her about doing a more featured duet or something like that, you know, which I think would be good. She's got a very cool tone. It's very cool tone. Yeah, and she yeah. sings very, very smoothly. I mean, it just yeah. like smooth as silk, her voice is. I, I really like it. Uh, I, I'm really excited for people to hear the song because I think it's got, it's just, it just hits me emotionally in a way that not a lot of music does these days. And I mean, I've been in the business for a long time. I'm probably somewhat jaded. Um, I don't give a lot of new music a chance because I don't find a lot of what's out there really inspires me these days, but this song, I mean, I, I really dig it. It's, it's just, there's just wow. something about the way it connects with me. Um, not so much the message because I don't think I've really can relate to the story itself, uh, but I'm sure most people can. Um, but but just musically and sonically, there's something about the song that I'm just like, as soon as it's over, I'm going to hear it again. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, exactly. So for you guys that are listening, I'll have the, uh, the purchase links and listen links in the show notes for you guys. Go check it out right away. Uh, but Dean, I wanted to ask you, you, since we last spoke, you've done a lot of gigs. It seems like you're, you're playing all the time. Yeah. It's time to get back into it. You know, um, it's been really fun to be honest. Yeah. You get a bit nervous about getting back on the tools, so to speak, you know, you're like, oh, well, how will it go? But you know, a couple of weeks in, you just start to feel better about it and you're performing better and everything tightens up. You know, it's, it's, it's good. It comes naturally these days, which is uh, a relief. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I, re I remember a couple the, of years without it. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember the last time we talked, you had kind of gone away from things a little bit and decided it was time to get back. But really performing live is is, is one of the two tests, right? Because there's writing. Can I still write? Can I still create something I'm happy with? And two, can I still perform? And it seems mm. like you've nailed both of them. I, I'm always working on it, man. <laughs> the job's never done. but. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. See, I lost the joy, man. I lost the joy. And it was one of those things that just happens. It happens to so many people with different careers and they'll just lose the joy. Some will stay because they feel it's the easier option than re beginning again somewhere else. And I, I get that. It's nice to be comfortable. It's good to have your, your zone, but yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, I, I don't know what we're talking about now. <laughs> it feels. I, I, I think it's, it, there's one thing when you lose your, your passion for a career, like if you're a salesman or, uh, or something like that, like a corporate type world job, that's one thing. But when you lose your passion as an artist, 
I mean, there's so much more that goes along with that, right? There's identity, there's the emotion of yeah. it, there's <laughs> who, who am I if I'm not creating or if I'm not performing? I mean, there's so much yeah. more that goes with that. But it seems like you you really just are are back and and just looking at the number of shows you've done. Uh, it it just seems like you're back full force. Like like this didn't really affect you. Is that the case, or are you still working on that? It affected me in a positive way because it gave me, it forced me to have that identity crisis where I didn't know who or what I was, and I finally uh, reconnected with my essence, you know, of, of who I am deep down. And that's what's what has been required for me to to level up and mm-hmm. to take the the next step. I needed personal growth. No amount of sitting in a studio would have done that. Right. I needed to stop, stop playing guitar, and stop have having my ego make me play the guitar. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to play the guitar, but ego was like, well, you got to keep doing that because otherwise you got to puff your chest out and all that sort of stuff. Have self pride and you've worked so hard on it, blah, blah. It's like, no, just stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. Stop. I need to, A, I need to stop playing music for a minute so I can address what the bloody hell's going on over here. And that was wonderful to, to start sorting through. And I view the world so differently. 24 months later, and I view the world in a much clearer lens with less um less faulty programming mm-hmm. you know i've got more of a, a I, feel, I feel awake i see things yeah just i just see the world through a different lens it's that's all i can say about it and it makes me feel good the way that i see it even when i see things that aren't good it doesn't rip my heart out or depress me or anything i, I might I tend to be more concerned than inconvenienced. Well, that's and good. I think that's a good way to be. Yeah, absolutely. It's healthy. You know, it's a lot yeah. healthier than just okay. I'll deal with this later, and you push it down, and then you push something on top of that. Because sooner or later, that's going to bubble up. It, it just will. Yeah. And whether it and, and you don't want to become one of those angry songwriters where everything that you write is about how the world sucks and how, you know, this girl is a bitch and how this person screwed you over. I mean, you don't want your your career to become a, a walk down the path of all the horrible things that have happened. Mm. You know, it's it's not healthy as a writer. You're, you're going to have a very small audience because it's one thing to write a song here and there, but it's another thing to make that your your stick. Yeah, yeah, you know? totally. Unless you want to get into doing some hardcore metal, which doesn't really necessarily seem to be your style. No, it never has been either. I I dabbled a little bit. Like I wanted, I I saw like Ingve Malmsteen was like, oh, I want to, I want to shred too. Uh, But then I started to listen to the music and it just, yeah, it wasn't up my alley. I don't know if that's uh, because of the music I grew up listening to or if it's just a personal thing or it's energy based frequency based but i i love you know like when dave dave gilmore makes it scream you know distortion sounds like that or eric johnson and stuff i'm all for distorted guitars but i like it to be used in a melodic manner and there's right. some metal bands out there that I've I've been sent songs. That friends of mine are like, "Oh, he'll actually like this one," <laughs> and and you just listen to it. It's like, oh, blows you away, you know. And there's bands like a little bit softer than metal, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm pretty happy. So uh, Slipknot, I was never a huge fan of, but when they when a couple of the boys went off and made Stone Sour, I like that. I like their albums. I was like, yeah, that's really nice. It's it's heavy, but it's got melodic stuff and there's acoustic bits in there. And it's yeah, I just found that more up my up my alley, you know. Yeah, and, and I I think that there's there's something to be said for people that have the talent that they can play, you know, a, a eight hundred notes in every measure. Mm. I've I've never been a fan of that kind of speed guitar playing. What I want out of music is I want it to make me feel something. And yeah. it's very rare that I want to feel aggressive or I want to feel like, you know, I, like I'm going to go wrestle yeah. somebody in the WWE. You know, I, I want music to make me feel good or help me not feel sad, just like let out the emotion. 
Um, that's why I tend to gravitate more towards uh, like the the rock guitar players like Reggie Blackmore or Michael Schenker uh, or Steve yeah. Morris because they know how to make you make me feel something with their playing. Um, yes, yes. I like the first couple of Ingve albums, but after that, I just kind of it just became too much. In fact, I reviewed both of those on the show, and I think I used the word uh, self indulgent more than any other word <laughs> during those episodes. I, I love the songs, like the writing of the songs is great, but the playing was just a little disconnected from the song it's almost like somebody else came and said okay i like your song but i can do it better and i'm just gonna mm -hmm. play over it you know it, yeah. it felt very disconnected from the music and that's one thing that i love about your music is that it feels like it's one thing you know i mean i can pick out the individual mm -hmm. things that are okay. going on but i can look at it and go this is one sound come together to give this song to us to listen to and there are some artists like you that are really good at it. And there are other artists, even solo artists, where I feel like you decided to add this track after the fact, didn't you? Because it doesn't feel connected to the song. So I always just wanted to be a musician first. Mm -hmm. Like being a an artist didn't cross my mind initially. That's not why I started learning guitar. I've always wanted to play music because I enjoy playing music. And my dreams as a as a kid or in my teens was to be a hot shot session musician you know and so I was learning different things and that's what I wanted to do so I've always had that interest in the music itself it's not all just about the guitar or it's this and like my first instrument was percussion was playing drums so then I went from playing drums and learning guitar I was able to pick up rhythms you know like strumming was able to strum right. before I could fret mm -hmm. notes and, and play and then it just sort of morphed in and then I'd hang out with musicians that I looked up to and ask them different things and try and learn as much as I could from them but a guy called Terence Barnard he is uh, a blues guitarist in Australia quite good and um, he said to me once <clears throat> I was 19 I was so lucky to figure this out or have someone tell me at 19 he said I just want to say something about your gig today. I said, yeah. He said, I wanted to say, stop playing for everyone else in the room and start playing for you, for your own enjoyment. He said, just put a little bubble around you and play for you. And if you're enjoying it and impressing yourself, he said, I guarantee you the audience will be enjoying themselves. He said, you don't have to, if you've got family coming, you don't have to play faster or louder or anything like that. He said, the, the people will feel the music. And if you're feeling it, they'll feel that. And it's, he said, that's, I think you'll find joy in that, you know. Uh, and that was the best thing I think I've ever learned in music. That is a great piece of advice. And, and I would have to agree, especially I would say for uh, guitar players and vocalists, the audience can feel whether you're into it or not. You know, mm. the bass player, it, as long as the bass player can lock onto the beat and the drummer can, can you know, keep it, keep a solid foundation, they can get through a show no matter how they're feeling. But the mm. singer and the guitar player, they're the ones that really bring out the emotion. And if yeah. they're not, if, if they're not in a good mood or if they're just, you know, they're they're pissed off because of whatever, the audience could definitely feel that. So that is a fantastic piece of advice. Isn't it good? Mm -hmm. It's just it changed my mindset and my playing. And I've taken that with me in through all different aspects of music. Is this, I want to impress, I just want to impress me. And does and that it has that affected? a long time to implement that in my songwriting though? And this is, these are the yeah. first songs that people are hearing where I've been implementing that into the songs. And it was prior to that, I was, I was practicing in it and all the other aspects except for writing songs. And then finally started to put it into play. And it's like writing a song, I always had that sort of radio pressure where it's like, well, it needs to be three to three and a half minutes long or it needs to be whatever it is. And, and it's got to have like, this sounds and, and it's going to have this structure and this one works and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, Oh, it needs three hooks, not one. And you're like, Oh, gee. and all that stuff. Whereas now I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> and it's, and it's in a positive way. It shouldn't, it shouldn't not caring is usually quite a negative thing, but in this 
circumstance it's it's different it's like i need to not care about the noise that is what industry expects or what society expects i just want to make music that i enjoy and i think from doing that i've noticed the response from the song we released a few months ago called mr man I've, the response has been really cool and different from other music i've released in the past uh people are connecting with it on a different level and and different people as well you know i'm getting a a different um sort of age group of people coming through uh, music listeners that i haven't met before you know are turning up and being like oh, i like that it's like in the past if i had to play to any of my other stuff that i've done they probably probably wouldn't have resonated you know right and, and then this is this new stuff because i'm connecting with it i find that other people are connecting with it as well it's just kind of like a it's, it's it's the what do they call that not the domino effect but the other the, the reverse right. right yeah well but but and it makes perfect sense because if you're if you're able to feel something and you're enjoying it chances are someone else will too then it just becomes a matter of the okay how do we market this and get it out to people so that they'll give it a chance you know and and swim through the muck of everything else that's out there uh, but I, I love that. And I was that's what I was going to ask you is if it had affected your songwriting yet, because it seems like it really has. When I listen to older stuff you've done versus the stuff since I've gotten to know you, I do sense a, a really big shift in that yeah. in the energy. I mean, obviously, you've upped your production game, you've upped your, you know, your your sound and all that. But there's a difference in the feeling in your music. Now, I feel like you're more connected to it. Yeah, I, I'm glad you noticed that. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I I can't really tell if people are genuinely connecting, but the response that I go off the response I've been getting, and when I play it to to people that that I hang out with or look up to, and it's just like, what do you think it is, you know? And um, I had a friend recently play the song to someone else while I was there. So, what do you think of this song? I've been listening to it lately. It was cool to watch their reaction of the song, not knowing, yeah, that it was my song. And I'm right there. <laughs> and so there was none of that. And it was just an honest vibe. And they were like, yeah, I can really dig that. I can dig that. Send me that. That's cool. And I was like, fantastic. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and you're like, you know, that'll be a dollar. That'll be <laughs> <laughs> But 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 that's it. We don't get. I mean, you play live, so you get some element of of that. But there's a difference between the way people connect with music live versus the record. You know, when they're in in a different environment, and a lot of times, whether they like the song or not, depends on if they're in a good mood, if they're hearing it at the right time of day, if you know, if they just had a good meal or whatever. Um, but we don't get to experience that a whole lot. You know, if, if they yeah, don't be comments, it's a strange world, isn't it? It is. I feel very disconnected from people that listen to my music because I don't I don't have that one on one. Mm. You know, and, yeah. and my stuff isn't really stuff that, that would be great for a live concert. It's a lot of it, if a lot of it's relaxation music. So unless I had like pillows instead of chairs, uh probably yeah. would not be a, it would it would be a really short show. So um <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I'm I'm really glad that you get to experience that. I'm I'm so happy to see you back in full force. I'm really excited for people to hear the single. Uh, like I said, it's coming out on the day that this airs. Uh, since it's before Christmas, I'll wish you a, a great holiday. What are you going to do for New Year's? We're having some sort of themed party at our house. Hmm. Um, my fiance Haley, she's she's working on the theme. She did come up with a couple of options. Um, which I, I wasn't overly interested in. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I've tried to persuade her against those. But uh, yeah, so some sort of suburban rager. <laughs> it sounds like a fun. great time. Yeah, yeah, here here in Vegas, they uh, they close the strip down. You can't drive anywhere on it. And they do this huge fireworks festival. I do not go out of my house on, on any of the holidays, way too many drunk people out on the roads and yeah. stumbling around. It's just uh, a, a little too risky for my taste, but I, yeah. uh, I have a, I have a good view. I can watch the fireworks and, and, all, and they, they really do go all out. So have, have a safe and wonderful new year's. Congratulations on your new song. What's, Thank what's you. the plan? What's next for you? We're just going to keep the songs coming. 
keeping them. I've, I've got a whole bunch in my computer. I'm gradually working through them and getting them edited and and sending them off to be um, to be mixed. But yeah, we'll get a few more done and and have an EP coming out. And then um, we're gonna play as many gigs as we can, and then drop another EP. We'll gradually feed it through, you know. Uh, and then we're looking at an album down the line. <laughs> You know, it could be down the line. And I, I feel like I might try doing an album album, you know, like a start to finish. Because all my, my albums in the past have been compilation records where it, it yeah. flows nicely, but it's not like this this continual progression of, of the lyric or, or anything. You know, I don't revisit things from track three and track 12 and all that. So I'd, I'd like, I think right. I'd like that experience. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of, that's the plan. And again, yeah. overseas, you know, we want to have a little, get off the big island down here and i want to suss out europe i'd love to suss out japan yeah. um love to get to vegas and mm. uh and and also see nashville i've not been there yet uh and i really want to get um and spend some time in texas would be would be really nice Oh, for sure. Yeah. And uh, I've got yeah. friends in uh, New Orleans I can connect you with if you get out there that are part of that uh, that oh, scene. Yes. Uh, I think you I guys would get along that. great. I'd love that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Have you ever thought about doing a concept album where you tell a story from start to finish? Not yet, but I will now. <laughs> <laughs> well, look what I've done. No, well, no, I haven't thought to do that. Yeah, I, I've done a few of them, and they're a lot of fun because it's it's just telling one long cohesive story. If you can make the story interesting, but you can use almost like you're like you're doing a film score. You know, you use little bits uh, that become themes throughout the albums, like character themes or location themes, and it's it's a real challenge. It's it's a lot different than than songwriting an album that's cohesive. You know, at one time yeah, versus yeah. the compilation. If you ever feel like challenging yourself, give it a shot. It's a it's a really interesting exercise for sure. Nice. I'm gonna suss this out. That's that's kind of up my alley. It's a bit weird. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, come back and see us anytime. Congratulations on freedom, Thank everybody. You. Go check it out right now. It is it is worth your time. I promise you. Dean, come back and see us anytime, man. We'll do. We'll do. I look forward to meeting you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We'll find you a good place to do a gig out here if you want to. That would be lovely. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely. Take, take care, my friend. All right, mate. Thanks for the chat. You bet. Bye bye.